Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of You're So Worth It. My name is Tim. And my name is Terry. Hey Terry. Uh, we're glad you're here uh, watching us uh, making a difference not only in your lives but hopefully ours as well. And uh, We got a great topic for us today and you today and hopefully uh, you'll hear something in it that, that's important. Mm -hmm. um, and what do we have today Terry? Our topic today is toxic relationships, and I feel like this is a good topic because um, both of us deal with a lot of people that find themselves in these relationships, and they're not really sure how it happened, but there is some kind of signs that, you know, the relationship may not be healthy, so we're going to talk about some of those things. And we have our little list to help us out, and we're going to go through six things, and, and there's a lot more, but these are kind of broad. Um, and the first one is control, and it's really kind of the first thing that you notice in a toxic relationship where you have lost control and someone else starts to gain control, and there's lots of things that, um, lots of things that looks like and, and presents itself. Do you want to talk about some of the controlling things that you would notice if the relationship was toxic? Sure, and that's the key word, toxic. So anything that has toxicity is, is just like the word states, right? It, it's not serving you well. And and control is just another form, another branch or an off, off branch of, of uh, someone who's toxic, someone who has toxic behaviors and, and um, it's, it's, uh, it entraps us, especially if we um, are comfortable with that type of behavior, that type of toxicity. Um, and and most, in most cases, it's, it's what we grew up in, around, you know, the, the family was toxic. So, um, and, and yeah, and that's, that's part of a toxic relationship is control. Uh, yeah, and the control can take many different forms. It can be, you know, not being able to have your own cell phone private where someone's checking your messages, where, you know, you have to turn over your email and the person is controlling what you do and how you, you know, who you talk to and, you know, you've kind of lost those boundaries. There, there's no boundaries. The person, yeah. you know, the other partner that is controlling has pretty much control of what you say and do and who you see and um, it starts to become that you don't have a sense of, of yourself because it's controlled by someone else. Well, it's usually too exactly what they're doing. Yeah. I find that a lot with the clients that I work with or the, um, you know, the groups that I facilitate. It's, you know, when, when somebody's trying to control something, when somebody's trying to tell you what to do, what you can't do, most likely everything they're trying to control, they're, they're doing. They're doing themselves. Correct. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is just general distrust. Even when you are trustworthy, um, in a toxic relationship, there is no trust. So even if you tell, you know, your partner, hey, I went grocery shopping, they'll be like, oh, you probably didn't. You probably went somewhere else. Um, you know, you're not able to just live a normal life because the person doesn't trust anything that you're saying or doing, mm. and then you end up second guessing yourself about, well, maybe I should have said this a different way. Mm. Um, you start trying to justify because you know it starts out as usually the person's really nice and you know kind of sucks you in, and then yeah. the true behavior of a controlling person doesn't come right in the beginning. It comes after several months of you know, gaining your trust and, you know, building this relationship. And then you see little signs of it start to come out. So, um, you know, at this point, it's the person you thought that you loved. And now they are, you know, making you feel guilty about things you do and making you second guess yourself and just a genuine distrust between the two people. Yeah. And, and, and again, it goes back to what I'm used to. Um, you know, there's a lot of dysfunction in families. There's a lot of dysfunction in toxic families, and I attract what I know. So if that's what I was introduced to at a very young age, um, it just continues into adulthood. The only thing that's changing is, is my physical body. You know, I'm bringing all my childhood into my adulthood. So it, it's, it's a very vicious, very uh, serpent-like um, um, you know, dysfunction sort of thing. Yeah, and that does lead into the guilt that you may feel if you are in a toxic relationship. You start feeling guilty about doing things that you would normally do, like you feel guilty about spending time at the gym because you're not spending time with them, or spending time with your family because you're putting them ahead of the person. And um, people in toxic relationships or people that like to control 
uh, tend to make their partners feel guilty about doing normal activities and then the person starts to feel guilty about mm -hmm. if they're doing anything that this person may not approve of um, just constantly feeling guilt for you know norm what would be normal um, to be able to have your own life too but uh, at some point if you're feeling guilty for everything that you do because you're not giving it all to your partner you're not asking permission you're not you know putting them first those are also some pretty good red flags on the guilt again another core childhood you know situation uh, experience environment there's plenty of mothers that shame their daughters and there's plenty of fathers that shame their kid their sons or vice versa mm -hmm. Um, you know, and it's just another continuation. Your parents are operating on, mm -hmm. on what was taught to them and their condition of their environment. Uh, same thing, you know, the same rule applies to them too. You know, they carry all their childhood behaviors and belief systems into adulthood. And, and, and then they have the child, which is you, and the same thing so it's just you know we we start we attract what we're used to yeah it's like the parent it might have been a parent role but now this partner is taking that role and because you've been treated that way before you find yourself falling back into it and mm. even though you know it's not great it's comfortable because that's how you know you may have been treated that way at some other at some other time yeah. during your childhood uh, which really leads to number four the isolation uh, in very toxic relationships that last, you know, for a period of time, the person tends to start isolating because they're ashamed of, you know, what's happened. Um, they're also, the, the partner makes them feel like, uh, you know, uh, no one cares about them but, but me. You know, mm. uh, the controller is the only person that really cares about you anyway. They're the only person you have. So, you know, they have kind of made you feel like nobody else matters but them. And you tend to start isolating. You lose all your connections. And some controlling partners will, you know, move you somewhere where you're not close to family. Um, just all different all different things can happen where the, the person that's being... Um, in the, you know being controlled is starts to feel very isolated and alone and that gives more power to the person that's trying to control and, and takes the power from you isolation is just a very dysfunctional way of relief you know it's it's not it's not the it's not an escape that's an illusion you know a lot of people isolate because they think it's a, an escape mm -hmm. a, just a momentary or a temporary uh, bit of relief but it's really not which leads us to number five, which is the whole critical language, uh, critical speak, critical of everything you do, which is, you know, just an attack on the person's self-esteem. So, um, you know, being critical of someone else can come in all sorts of forms. Don't you agree? Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Many, many different forms. And, and again, that's just... It's just, it's just the same, you know, it's... Mm -hmm. The vicious cycle. Correct. Every, everything about... This toxicity is, is what we're used to, what was done to us. You know, you have people that touch people in, uh, inappropriately, and 99% of those people were offended themselves at some time in their life. And if my mother was constantly critical of me, I'd turn that into being critical of myself, and then I'm untreated, I'm toxic, I'm dysfunctional. Another person picks up on my behaviors that they're used to, and they allow me to be critical of them because I'm, I'm untreated. Everything about me is unresolved, and I still haven't gotten over my mother that was critical or criticized me my entire life. And some men that I work with, they're adult men, 20s, 30s, 40s. 50s and their mothers are still criticizing them and they still have this incredible power over them. Yeah. Which leads us to the last thing, the whole second guessing, which is really where you're going with that. You're, told, you're, you're constantly second guessing your thoughts, your emotions, uh, your behaviors. You know, you start to feel like maybe I'm crazy, maybe this person is right, maybe I am stupid, maybe I can't do anything right, maybe nobody loves me. And you're totally second guessing all of those things internally that are going on with you till you, you don't even know who you are anymore, right? You're, you're constantly second guessing, you know, your behaviors, your thoughts, your emotions. And that's really when total control has happened where, you know, you've lost the ability to really uh, see what's going on and to step away. It's, it's gotten into a stage where I would say it's, it's very toxic and, Correct. you know, it's just going to continue and you need to really get some help at that point. But it's hard, it's hard to see. Getting help is one of the hardest things to do, you know, mm -hmm. just getting to a treatment, just getting to a therapist's office. 50% of the battle's already over. 
50%. Those are great odds. But, you know, again, getting wrapped up in all this dysfunction and these toxic uh, uh, behaviors and, 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 and operations, so to say, it's exactly what you're used to. You know, this, this uh, second guessing. How many of you, you know, your mothers did, are you sure you want to do it that way? Or your father, why did you do it that way? Why didn't you do it this way? And, and it's just all this stuff. And, and, it, and it just, like, I, keep, I can't say it enough. You know, the only thing that's changing is our physical body, our physical appearance. But everything in childhood comes into our adulthood, and we just keep doing what we're used to. And we're not used to going to therapists. We're not used to admitting certain things because we've been critical of ourselves all our lives. So, oh my gosh, if they go to a therapist, oh no, I can only imagine what mom or dad would say. And you're still giving them the power of what they say, right? So we get to a point where we, we got to do something about it, and this is why we keep doing what we're doing, um, you know, trying to make a difference, right? And why are we trying to make the difference? Because you're it's so, so worth, worth it. it. God bless you, everybody. Thank you again. I hope most of you or all of you uh, listen to the entire video. Again, my name is Tim. I'm an addictions counselor with the uh, Florida Certification Board. If you want to reach out to me, uh, that's up to you. Uh, my email is Tim. Roberto, addiction counselor at gmail.com. Thanks and have a great day. Thanks.